Massachusetts meets the NDP is screening its candidates online. The party wants the passwords of their social media accounts. The move may prevent potential embarrassment for the party, but is it going too far? Teresa Lalonde reports. We're taught to keep online passwords private. That doesn't apply if you're running for NDP leadership. The party sent questionnaires to candidates asking for access to all online accounts and full disclosure of any potential faux pas. A very understandable concern that some of these candidates might have said something online that could come back to haunt them. Remember Ray Lamb? His run for the federal NDP was cut short because of this Facebook photo. It's tough to imagine finding more questionable visuals of Dana Larson behind a private password. I make shortbread cookies. Liberal candidate Mike DeYoung is open, but about a different kind of baking. Talk about that. Christy Clark is all over YouTube. I did spend about a half hour looking for images of Christy Clark. There are many. She's been public for a long time. Joking with a punk rocker she interviewed, a colorful pose with her then husband. The BC Liberals do not demand passwords or online disclosure. They have a screening process at the nomination stage. It's pretty par for the course. The only difference is you've got this new social media element going on, and I think that's what's raising some people's eyebrows. Former candidate Ray Lamb thinks the NDP has every right to investigate, but wonders if it will be necessary in the future. The way in which we look at politicians will change significantly as the younger population grows older and starts taking an interest in public life. Talking with Dave Teixeira, owner of Dave.ca, he headed up social media for Christy Clark. Jillian Shaw is the digital life writer with the Vancouver Sun. Let me start with uh, you, Jillian, uh, on, on this issue. BC. New Democrats are asking potential leadership candidates to hand over the keys to their online lives. And uh, Nicola Simons, for one, is balking at that. What do you think? Well, you know, I have, I'm just writing a story right now, Bill, that is saying that uh, demanding leadership candidates turn over their social media passwords and sign in seems a little draconian, even for a party that was embarrassed by having an election candidate caught uh, clutching a woman's breast in a Facebook photo. I'm guessing that that's why maybe that, you know, this is happening, but, or, you know, it was an, it was an election candidate at one time in, um, in Vancouver who was, you know, had a big face or a Facebook sort of um, a snafu, I would say. And, and perhaps the NDP is hoping to avert something like this in, in the future, but they are totally missing security and privacy considerations, and I think they are going very much in the wrong direction on that. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, if they're showing a lack of trust on their own candidates, I don't think that says much for how they will govern. I mean, uh, to me, Bill, they're, they're acting almost like jilted lovers. You know, when, you, when something happens in a relationship, you, you ask your boyfriend or your girlfriend, hey, can I have access to your email so I can check what you're doing? I mean, yes, the, the public in D.C. broke up with the uh, NDP back in 2001, and now they're just acting ridiculous. Um, it makes no sense. That said, there certainly should be a policy – of, of, of uh, vetting someone's public persona on social media, but you do not need the passwords. You do not need to have access to the messages, rather just the public personas, and I think that's fair game. The open line, hi. Uh, thank you for calling me in hot committee. I'm going to be short to the point. Um, I am going to admit I'm Christy Clark fan on Twitter and YouTube, so I'm very partisan, but I want Nick, or is it Nicholas, to know that uh, – He's got a lot of support from the BC Liberal side because this is an issue of civil liberties, and I think there's a difference between honest disagreements with, I think, the only candidate of the BC NDP leadership who could beat our team and, uh, and, uh, and us. So I think this is just wrong and Orwellian. Okay. Nick? Well, That's what I said, too. This reminded me of uh, 1984 stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I appreciate the, the, the support. You know, I, I think that uh, the NDP as a party is strong, and we're we're very capable. Any one of us will be very capable of uh, of uh, ensuring that this uh, the current government's held to account. And we're, you know, I I think the civil liberties are nonpartisan issue. In fact, uh, we all have a responsibility to make sure that uh, we don't see them erode. And this is all a learning experience for lots of people. And uh, I, I think it's a good discussion to have, and I don't think anyone should feel defensive about it. Just, you know, as long as we protect our, our rights and balance the needs of the party at the same okay. time.
A leadership candidate for the BC NDP says he is taking a stand for privacy rights. Nicholas Simons is refusing to hand over the passwords for his social media accounts, despite demands from his own party. As Stephen Smart explains, the battle could set a precedent. When Christy Clark was chosen Liberal leader, her victory was in part thanks to an effective social media campaign. It's the same thing for those in the NDP race. Leadership candidates there are also trying to use every means possible to get their message out. But for Nicholas Simons, his online efforts are running head-on into party rules. The principle is one of privacy and what is reasonable access to personal information. This is uncharted territory and we need to be careful about what, what's requested and what's provided as you know, a precedent could be set. Privacy advocates say it's a murky situation. We live in a surveillance society more and more. So not just government, not just police, but uh, we are constantly under observation by each other. And late today, the Provincial Privacy Commissioner also weighed into the fight, launching her own investigation of the NDP's password demands. She'll have to determine if this is indeed a breach of individual rights or just the reality of running a modern political campaign. Stephen Smart, CBC News, Victoria. the familiar faces of the NDP leadership race, then there's Nicholas Simons. My experience in politics so you may not recognize him, but right now, Simons is getting more media attention than his competitors, thanks to a standoff with his party. The issue? Privacy. This is something that I'm not comfortable doing. The NDP has a screening policy requiring would-be leaders to hand over their passwords to social networking sites before they can qualify as official candidates. Party brass want to see if anything inappropriate has been posted on Facebook. Simons has a publicly accessible page, but thinks the demand for the password to his private account crosses the line. I just want to make sure that people who contact me know that their privacy and my privacy are, are going to be protected. The policy was born now investigating whether the NDP is violating the province's privacy legislation. Could you be wrong? We we could have to, uh, in the future, maybe we'll um, change things a bit. She's trying to find a compromise before the commissioner forces one. The party president, not pleased, this spat over privacy is now so public. Rob Brown, CTV News, Vancouver. Well, he calls himself a brother, but you know it's no game. It's really important that the people of British Columbia know the full truth about uh, leadership candidates. We're shining a light on them, a light that you're not going to see on their own way. Those plexiplastic couples, they're your special friends. They see you every night. Well, they call themselves protection, but you know it's no game. You're never out of their sight. 